Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Shomajit Patro. I am an associate professor of sociology working in Shidhukanu Bidsha University, Purulia of West Bengal. Today, I'll discuss democracy, governance, and movement, civil society, NGOs, and middle class. I'll describe the role of civil society organizations particularly non-governmental organizations in promoting democratic values, institutions, as well as making governance participatory and transparent, which is very important in contemporary India. My discussion would also locate such uh, things in the context of increasing participation of the middle class in these mediatized world in which the role of civil society has been changed to a great extent. The concept of civil society as a space between the family and the market and the state. We conceptualize civil society as a space between family market on the one hand and state on the other hand. This civil society comprises a plethora of groups, a czar of groups of all sorts ranging from charities to advocacy groups. Civil society organizations vary widely in membership, type of memberships and geographical coverages and they expose all shades of causes and concerns. Scholars like Bete, Dhanagare, Bhaviskar, Shields have explained that the civil society is a space which is rational, open, and which is hugely non-political and they all agree that NGOs are a very important component of civil society as the NGOs work in the space of civil society although we should remember that all civil society organizations are not NGOs. The post 1990s provided an opportunity for the middle class, especially the ascendant middle class, also are described as the new middle classes. And these changes which occurred during the last few decades led to such changes in which the middle class have come to the fore. There could be several reasons for this. First, the middle class has the resources to articulate and mobilize, has the resources and articulate to mobilize around the issues which concerns people, which is a matter of concern for the people. This middle class has the resources to develop an agenda with adequate economic and cultural resources. Secondly, many members of the middle class led associations have strong ties with the government officials who prove, who prove that their connections with the government uh, uh, is very useful uh, in getting th the things done. NGOs operate in various ways. They are funded by international agencies. They are, there are many donors who fund for the NGOs. Uh, these donors have, are, uh, are located in many developed countries. They are located within the countries, they fund the NGOs and the NGOs fought for the causes of the people. This 
he, this can vary the function and activities of the NGOs can vary in scale and function and may, it can also vary uh, in their interface with the government and beneficiaries. However, one thing is very clear that the NGOs usually undertake advocacy programs, dissemination of knowledge and spreading of awareness in a bid to influence the policy and laws that favor the causes they are fighting for. This is how they become important agents of social movements. They give voices to the causes of the concerns of the people. Many laws, RTI, Right to Information Act, Right to Food, Right to Education, Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act, all these acts starting from Right to Information Act, to Land Acquisition Rehabilitation Act, all these acts have been enacted as a result of the activism of the NGOs, as a result of the movements started by the NGOs. Finally, the members of the middle class have access to various other resources. What is middle class? Middle class people have skills, they have knowledge, they are in a better position, so they do sit in television programs. So they have ties up with the television channels, they have their uh, friends, for example, in printing press. So, they have access to internet, they have access to uh, many other uh, means by which they can, they can influence the uh, policy making bodies. And the important thing is middle class is more visible, more prominent in any kind of social living. So, middle class led NGOs are more uh, significant, are performing more uh, significantly in social movement. I was talking about the driving force behind middle class, why middle class is uh, leading, is coming forward to lead NGOs and uh, many successful NGOs. There are mainly three driving forces. One is, in 1991, economic liberalization was ushered in redefining the role of state. You should note this term, redefining the role of state, I will explain. And opening up various sectors of governance to non-state actors like NGOs and many other civil society organizations. You know that 1990s is the era of globalization. This economic liberalization reduced the role of the state. It, it bring, brought down the notion of minimal state, the role of government has been minimalized, has been curtailed and when the role of government is reduced, is decreased for obvious reasons, the uh, flourishment of non-state actors like NGOs, civil society organizations are ensured. This is the first cause, the economic liberalization, which reduced the government's role in many sectors and encouraged non-government organizations to come forward. Secondly, the involvement of all kinds of civil society organizations, including NGOs, was further facilitated by a constitutional change. 
This constitutional change was 74th Constitutional Amendment Act in 1991 that stressed on decentralization and participatory governance. How can the participation of the people living in grassroots level, how can the, the activism of the people living in rural areas be ensured? These are ensured through NGOs. And these NGOs are mostly led by some people who have wider connections. A person from middle class. And the third one, there were a series of legislations during the 90s, 1990s and 2000s, which empowered, which gave instruments in the hands of the people, like Right to Information Act, like Right to Food Act, like Right to Education Act, Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act, Right to uh, Information Act, Right to Public Interest Litigation Act. Public Interest Litigation Act was very significant in empowering the people. And more recently, Public Discourser Law, 2005, which was enacted in 2005, Public Discourser Law, and Community Participation Law, the, in the same year it was enacted. All these laws, right from the uh, Right to Information Act, Public Interest Litigation Act, or Community Participation Law, all these acts empowered the people living in grassroots level to, to, uh, to say something about what is going on and to register their protest against many, uh, many, against many um, governmental policies, against many things which, is, which the government is doing. One important thing has led to the uh, increasing participation of NGOs, that is natural disasters, like super cyclone in Orisha, which happened in 1999, like the earthquake, which occurred in Vuj in 2001, tsunami that affected in uh, a large part of our country, particularly in Tamil Nadu, in 2004, triggered greater, in, greater involvement of the NGOs in post-disaster recovery work. Several NGOs, citizen groups, resident welfare associations have proliferated in the decades following 1990s across India. Impetus for these activism, impetus for uh, impetus to work for the people after these disasters encourage the NGOs to come forward. In our state also, after the Ayla, you all know Ayla, after Ayla, many NGOs started working in rehabilitation of the people, of Isla affected people in Sundarbon areas. These associations essentially come from the supreme inefficiency in governance. You should mark this thing, that the role of NGOs becomes important in a gap. If, when rather, when the governmental agencies cannot render services, the gap is, the gap is fulfilled by the NGOs. So these associations essentially come from the inefficiency in governance. Sometimes corruption in public life, 
corruption means when a person from government mainly government uh, person uh, public servant which we call public servant when a public servant they misuse when a public servant misuses his position to give uh, undue advantages to give undue benefits to someone it can be called a corruption the perception of corruption is huge in uh, in in our country people think that governmental organizations are mainly corrupt organizations so they rely ngos and there is a general distrust for the political class in our country we do not believe the political leaders if say for example you all know the uh, the the organization which work in the rural uh, areas like ram krishna mission you all know people believe that these organizations do much better than the government organizations and these gap in the governance this gap in the governance leads ngo to come forward this gap in the governance this gap in the this negligence rather uh, on the part of the governmental agencies led compel the ngos to come forward the shortfalls in governance had become quite acute inefficient delivery of basic services like water solid waste management bureaucratic delays in accessing municipal services corrupt practices in government offices poor maintenance of roads gardens open spaces footpaths irregular collection and disposal of garbages lack of scientific techniques lack of scientific management of these garbages all these things are compelling people to 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 protest against the things that is going on uh, in our day to day life so associations of middle class citizens this is not our organizations ngos rws citizens initiatives have facilitated middle class politics in ways that were unknown earlier that the change political situation of 1990s which uh, which emerged as a result of globalization has provided many new opportunities to the middle class people to develop new political strategies to make things work in their favor and in many cases they join or they open an ngo to serve the people these ngos can work for urban spaces the changed political situation in the context of globalization has provided many new opportunities to middle class citizens to develop new strategies to make things work in their favor these political changes which occurred as a result of globalization new investments are coming in new technologies are coming in new cultural patterns are coming in so the entire ideas entire modus operandi of the ngos has changed and middle class as a very uh, well our section of these changes taking the is taking the leadership in many areas these range from reclaiming urban spaces or or negotiating with the municipal officials to get better services if a rural people go to the 
middle class, go to the municipal offices, he will not be or she will not be entertained if um, equally when a middle class uh, NGO uh, representative uh, meet a uh, government officials. They can use newly acquired legal measures. The middle class people, they are well aware, they are educated, they have skill, they have internet facilities, they are well exposed, well exposure, they all know the acts enacts, enacted from time to time. So they are empowered with the, with the, with the legislations which are enacted from time to time, like the Right to Information Act, public interest litigations to acquire greater account accountability and transparency from the government departments using pressure group tactics and lobbying to influence the policy and practices. So the point is NGOs which are led by the middle class, mainly middle class people are, 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 are establishing and leading the NGOs and they are, are, are in a better position to use their connections, they are in a better position to use their knowledge, they are in a better position to use their influences to get the things done. The political space of middle class led NGOs is fragmented. It is, uh, it is, it should be acknowledged that the political space of middle class led NGOs is fragmented in a sense that there are a quite few examples of NGOs with middle class leadership that champion the causes of the people. This is a criticism against these middle class led NGOs that these middle class led NGOs uh, mainly look at or mainly fight for the causes of the middle class. They do not go beyond the agendas of middle class and they do not go to the poor. They, they seldom, they rarely fight, they rarely fight for the uh, for the uh, for the interest of the poor, they are not visible in those areas in which the tribal people live, in which the poor people live, in which the street children live. They are mainly they, this is a criticism of these middle class NGOs. Now let us summarize the whole thing. We have taught today three things. One is civil society. Another one is middle class. Another one is the role of middle class in social movement. What is civil society? Civil society is an abstract space. It is a space. You can conceptualize civil society as a space, a rational space, open space, non-political space, which exists in between family, market on the one hand and state on the other hand. Civil society has many organizations. These are called civil society organizations. NGO is one of them. NGOs are non-poly are non-governmental organizations. NGOs are non-governmental organizations. They try to they try to fill up the gap of the governance and middle class, I have said that middle class people are in a better position to lead an NGO. Why? Because middle class people have education, middle class people have resources, they are well connected people, they have, they, they have friends in in their government offices, they have connections with the government officials, they have connections with media, mass media, with television people, people working in televisions, people working in print medias. So they can act as a pressure group. The middle class can act as a pressure group <coughs> which 
which is very effective in any kind of bringing changes to the existing social order so in uh, in 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 a in contemporary uh, indian scenario we can find that there are many uh, legislations right, like right to information act uh, right to food all these acts are the achievements of middle class led ngos so the ngos there are also uh, one criticism that these middle class led ngos do not look properly at the causes of the tribal people causes of the poor people they are more interested in their own uh, class interest i can use the term class interest this is a criticism but we cannot ignore the role of middle class in these ngo led social movements for more information you can visit epg patshala website thank you